And what about ye? Welcome back to the garage here. And uh, this is a follow up video. This is uh, a follow up video to the scoping of the multi coil pack with our bits of metal, copper, aluminium, and uh, earth rod there. So, what this is, is this is making a, a homemade paddle probe, uh, but one that is scope safe. Uh, so, I'll explain in a wee minute. So, yeah, looking good. So, we'll swap them leads over. We'll just keep that light off. Huh? We'll swap these leads over. That's the Pegascope, and um, we'll change it, we're just clipping onto this cover bar, nothing fancy, nothing fancy here. So, so in that wee clip is uh, the demonstration of the multi-coil pack uh, pickup using a bar there, but that, that video was really more about uh, resistivity of different materials but anyway what I was doing was I was directly connecting the scope onto uh, the, the metal bar there or the copper bar but uh, that's okay doing that uh, that demonstration was on a known good coil pack but in the real world when we're trying to find a faulty coil pack if we're trying to do secondary ignition pickup and we're suspecting one of the coil packs is, is faulty that uh, could cause us a bit of difficulty. So an old an old school uh, test is you put a penny on the, the top of the coil pack there and uh, you use that as a pickup and you put your back probe on the, the 2P here and uh, that's, that's, that's directly going on to that. Now that's, that's all well and good, but if you have a coil pack that has indeed failed, there's a possibility you could have, be having discharge into the face, into the top surface of this coil pack. And uh, what you're essentially effectively doing then is connecting the scope to thousands of volts. And that's how you smoke your scope. And uh, so that test would be considered not a scope safe test, just like what I was doing in, in the, the video with the copper bar. So, uh, well, just think about, I'm just uh, going to go into uh, how to make things scope safe and how to, you know, sort of think about uh, what, what you're actually doing and uh, try to protect your, your, your equipment as well as uh, getting the best use out of it. So here's a, here's a, there's a few uh, pickups lying about here. So we're going to go into a couple of them here. Uh, this is a snap-on uh, pickup which uh, all that does is go on to your, your coil lead. And on the end of it there is an audio type jack. So that is pretty simple device. There's a wee pickup there and uh, that's, that's basically it. And it's just connected through. So however, uh, the, the important bit of, of using that is using this lead that comes with it. So this is the, this is the snap on lead that's associated with that type of pickup. It's also, uh, they also use that on the, on the, the big uh, long uh, pickup paddles as well. So the thing about this is a lot of people think there's a capacitor in this. And uh, where they're, I presume they're getting that from, is these tests are known as COP, secondary paddle lead, capacitive. As, so that's a capacitive test. But we'll, we'll just talk about that for a wee minute. This, this lead here has no capacitance to it at all. So if I uh, put the Vantage there, it's on the ohm scale, and if I connect it on to the center there, it is showing 11,000 ohms. So there's a, there's a resistance in this lead, and that is making it scope safe. So the reason why you need it scope safe is if you had a break in this wire, if you had uh, this insulation was poor and it arced into this, it would go straight up into your scope. 
Similarly with this type of test here as well, where you put the penny onto that, the, the KV, if this dielectric is compromised, arc straight into your scope, scope smoked. So built in resistance uh, to protect that. Now this capacitive idea then, this capacitive test. So that is a paddle lead uh, and in brackets capacitive. So what they're actually referring to is this paddle, the, the, the act of putting the paddle on top of the coil pack is a capacitive test. That is opposed to uh, an inductive type trigger pickup inductive, which is that type of style there. So we'll just, I'll just have a wee look at that one. This, this is, is that similar type of uh, pickup there. This is an inductive pickup as opposed to a capacitive pickup. So what we'll have in here is we'll have a coiler and a coiler and a furry core going around. And then whenever you close the jaws there, that uh, joins these two together. So you have a current transformer in there and it clicks together. So what we can do is I can demonstrate that those two descriptions on a, on a bit of paper here. So, so what we have for the, the capacitor, if you imagine that is the top of your coil pack. So there's the top of your coil pack. And on the other side then is your paddle. So that's your paddle. In between the two is your dielectric. So that's your typical capacitor sort of drawn there. So if that's the top of the coil pack, that's your paddle. That's your capacitive test. Whereas this other one here with a coil, you're, you're putting the coil around it and if in a, like a current transformer tile, style uh, fashion is they we're putting a coil around this is the HT lead there. So that's capacitive, that's inductive, and that's the two types of tests. However, that is not referring to uh, the protection, the scope protection. This is an attenuator, this, this is an attenuated lead. So if we go into, if we go back into that uh, paddle probe there again, this capacitive test, uh, capacitive tester, this capacitive test, is indeed attenuated. So uh, the COP secondary paddle lead in brackets capacitive is attenuated to a thousand to one. It meets at one volt display in your scope reckoning to a thousand volts. So what's that? what that is telling me is that there is a thousand ohm resistor in this lead. Okay, so that is uh, where the attenuation is coming from similar to this lead. Now, unfortunately, that's not the end of the story, uh, but however, uh, what we can look at is this type of lead here then, which is a secondary pickup that goes around the lead with that clamp. So I've taken this apart here uh, to see what is going on and how uh, this functions and whether this is protected or not there is protection in this lead, right? So what we've discovered is instead of there being a resistance in the lead, uh, that clamp is directly connected to the core of the BNC. So that there is no resistance between the core of the BNC and that. So that is directly through, it's a one-to-one. -one. However, the protection lies in here that is a capacitor that we we uh, block there that we beige block is a capacitor and that goes between the earth and the this body here and that body there is uh, part of the clamp that's it's connected to the clamp there as uh, hopefully you can see there so that is is that body there as well so what we'll have in this lead is between this alligator and these jaws, there's a capacitor between these two. So the idea here is then that if we directly connect that onto the bar there, you need to connect that to 
your ground in case you get a voltage spike. So if your coil and plug discharges, so if you imagine that's in below there, and that is faulty, that uh, discharges or arcs into the copper bar, that capacitor in there dissipates that to the ground through your clamp. So I've seen some guys uh, connecting their scope and multiple channels on the scope, one or two or three or four, and because the earth is connected together on the scope, they say, oh, well, you only need to, you only need to connect one earth clamp because it's all, they're all together in the scope. Well, that is true, but if you're using a protected lead of this fashion here, you need to make sure that that you're better having that uh, connected to your ground at the car uh, rather than relying on that. That will be dissipated through the scope, through the earth in the scope then. So if you're doing this type of test here with the, uh, with the, the, the pickup using a copper bar, you just clamp this type of lead on and you will have protection. So that's, uh, that's fine on, on that. So I'll just draw your attention to, here's another wee one that, uh, this is probably the reason why people are getting, uh, I think that the, uh, yeah, I think that there's capacitance in the, in the lead. This is a, another wee uh, pickup probe, which is uh, AAS wave here. And if we scoot down into a bit of the description on this one, uh, yeah, there's it there. Capacitive protected to avoid damage to your test equipment. So it is protected in the same fashion as that ST25 pickup lead. So uh, the way that's connected, it's connected with uh, a BNC on the, on the end of it there. And if we look at the lead that they're recommending to use for that, BNC coupler lead for COP probes, uh, that's it there. Uh, so BNCs connect the scope to the, the probe there and the clamp connects the ground. But if we look at the description there, attenuation one to one, there's no attenuation in that lead whatsoever. So the protection is indeed in the probe in that particular example, whereas the protection here is in the lead and the protection here is a capacitor between ground and the clamp. So. Uh, yeah, so that brings us on to our homemade stuff, our homemade paddle probe, which is what this is all about. Uh, I've seen other videos of people making homemade paddle probes out of bits of water pipe and stuff. So I decided to have a go at one of them myself and see uh, what I can come up with. But the concerns are raised that they're not scope safe. So what I have uh, done here, this is a bit of water pipe, a bit of heat shrink on it. Uh, a four mil banana female there in the end of it. And this is a, uh, a normal plumbing uh, end cap. So we'll have a wire in here and the wire goes along inside it. In the middle here, there's a 10,000 ohm resistor and it just connects on to the, the, the jack there. So what I'm doing with this is I'm simulating what this lead does. So I could of course, use this lead. I could just put an audio female in the end of this and plug that lead in and away we go. Uh, but what I've elected to do is to make this completely separate from that lead and I can just use uh, an ordinary an ordinary, uh, an ordinary, four mil lead with a cartilage clip on it or something. Uh, I can use my ordinary leads with this. So I'm going to give this a test and, and see what happens but we'll have to be aware that there's a 10,000 ohm. I've basically built in an, attenuate, an attenuation into this probe and it's simulating the way that this, this, this lead here is basically an attenuator. Whereas this lead, I'll just uh, point out, just to make it clear, that that lead there is directly connected to here and that is one to one then. That is one to one, that'll be one to one in your scope. So uh, it does describe these here as 10,000 to one, but it's a 10,000 to one decay is, is what it actually is. 
and what it's referring to is that it'll dissipate uh, the, the 10,000 volts uh, across that capacitor uh, with, a, with a decay, with a, a sliding scale of a decay. So we'll give this uh, wee paddle probe a bit of a test out on the car here and uh, see what kind of uh, output it gives us, see if it's worthwhile making one of these. Um, failing that, uh, if this does work out to be uh, no good, it didn't cost any money, but as I say, what you're probably better doing is using that onto that. Uh, so if it was a single, if it was a single coil on plug like that there, you could cut a bit of copper down, uh, two inch square or something like that, and uh, just clip that onto it. And uh, I'd say you've got uh, you've got a protected uh, a protected pickup. Okay. Okay, so we have our Pico 2000 mix egg and uh, I've uh, put in a few settings there and uh, I've been uh, testing this wee, wee boy here so that's just connected to that and then the other lead is over on the, the battery terminal so this is the one with the uh, 10,000 ohm resistor in the middle of it and we're just going to set it on. I'm going to set it on sort of flush like that every time and go across and uh, I'm just going to uh, set the phone in, in front of the screen. Well maybe you'll be able to get it like this. Let's see if I can get that. So there's the capture there on the Pico. You can see it. I'm sort of stretching here and holding the, the camera one hand now. Oh, oh. Oh, okay. okay, got the paddle off. So we'll just change the lead over and just pull that lead out and stick it on the mix out. Right, that's it on the mix egg. I'm just going to hold it on here. And there we go. So when you do this here, you need to set a fairly high trigger on it. And uh, as you can see there, it's it's uh, it's on one volt there, and it's just measuring four four point six volts there. So that's a good capture there. The wee paper was a wee bit. A wee bit jumpy, but you'll probably tweak that. Uh, I'm gonna probably tweak that if I, I kept going at it. Uh, it's probably not gonna see anything now. It's been, uh, I've left it wrong too long. So, just that. Right, so I held it on there and stopped the, uh, the capture there and wound it back a lot of frames. Yeah, I'll run it back a lot of frames. I'm just on five milliseconds for revision, and uh, there we go. That's a wee Pico 2000 from that scope safe paddle probe. So, as a guys, I have a wee message at the end of this video here, and uh, if you don't mind, uh, if you keep on watching for another uh, 20 seconds, be much appreciated.